Please welcome Joe Kiani. First of all, and I can't forget this one, I just want to thank Mike Durkin, Mike Ramsey. Thank you, thank you. Sanaz, Concello, the incredible board of The incredible board of directors uh, of Patient Safety Movement Foundation, they give so much of their time to help make, make what we're trying to make happen, which is to get us to zero. You know, I, I don't know, many of you may not know this, but uh, everyone except I think Sanaz and Consela do, do not get paid for what they're doing. So Mike Ramsey, Mike Durkin, it's all, all volunteerism. Reminds me of a joke in, um, I think it's an East Coast joke that, you know, the winner gets one day in Philadelphia and the loser gets two days in Philadelphia. So, uh, <laughs> so we greatly appreciate what you're doing. I can't, th can't thank you enough on behalf of patients that won't even know what you're doing, of the push you've made to help, help drive this momentum. You know, I'm, I'm an engineer and an entrepreneur, and I can't help myself but look at measurable things and see, are we making progress? I know for a while, before COVID, we used to measure how many companies have signed the data share pledge, which, by the way, I think we hit about 90, and you wouldn't have an ecosystem for AI to do predictive algorithms without these companies sharing their data. We used to count the number of the hospitals who made commitment to zero and implement the evidence-based practices. And they would measure how well they've done since they implemented. I know Robin did amazing work coming up with the metrics for that. And we used to look at uh, you know, things like the whole system of education and wanting to change education. And I know COVID kind of threw us off. I want this to be the last year <laughs> that we're thrown off and I hope we can get back because we do need to do measurable things. Now, one thing I can assure you as I'm sitting here taking count of every measurable thing, well, one of them is what Peter Lockman's done with the fellows. I hope we can do a lot more of those. I ask anyone who's listening, thank you. Thank you, Peter. What a great model. If you're ready to work 24-7 for nothing um, and mentor a lot of people that are going to be the future of healthcare, please volunteer to do what Peter's done so we can scale uh, that effort. I was so happy to see Michelle Schreiber talk about what CMS is doing. They've already uh, picked out the high-priority harms, and hopefully they're going to do something about it. So those were a couple of points I really felt, okay, we're doing something, but I want to go back. I want to get us to go back and implement evidence-based practices. I want us to go back measuring what it's doing. And if it's not helping, change it till it's helping. I have personally sat as the audit, excuse me, as a quality committee chair of a hospital, Children's Hospital, for several years. And I saw once those evidence-based practices were put in place, how we did get to zero. And I also know, you know, Kim said it, not as loudly as I was hoping she'd say it, but one of the ways they got there, they made zero one of the three criteria for the bonus for the faculty. And when that happened, guess what? Incentives were aligned. And I remember going to the next meeting without me even pushing. They had gone through the Patient Safety Movement Foundation's website, found every evidence-based practices, checked off green for what they were doing in each one of those, yellow or red, what they were not, with a mitigation plan to get them all to green. And they didn't get to zero right away, but they didn't give up. They stayed with it, they kept it under bonus, and they did for six years. So we need to go do that. I, I, I heard a lot of wonderful, funny and interesting anecdotes this last couple of days. I love the 11 second how long it takes before uh, doctors interrupt their patients. <laughs> I don't think I'll forget that one. Um, but I got to tell you, I, um, I want to I put up a slide before I wrap up. Do you, have, do you have my slide? 
Yeah, so this is, this is the President's Council of Advisors in Science and Technology. And I, I like to put it up because when I went off of my memory, I forgot a few of the important things we recommended. One of them is public disclosure by every hospital of the harms on their website, somewhere it's easy to see. Think about that. Think about eventually if every hospital reports every harm. Secondly, safety of workers. How can we expect, how can we expect clinicians to take care of patients if we don't take care of the clinicians? And the janitor who's making sure that room, as someone said, is disinfected. Everyone. So work, workforce safety is just as important as patient safety. And then the equity. It needs to be equitable. Uh, too many people of color suffer far more. I mean, one of our lovely board members who hasn't been with us for a while because she's been, again, subject of medical errors, Alicia. I mean, it's incredible how whether you're Alicia or Serena Williams, you don't get listened to. And it's, it shouldn't be that way. And, and I love what Chicago is doing where they're hiring people that represent the community because they will listen. They have empathy for those people. You know, one of, the, one of the things that I think was lost during COVID, and I've seen the data, WHO published it. During COVID, medical errors shot up 30 to 40% across the board. Well, I think the biggest reason was that family was not there to help take care of the patient. Family engagement is crucial. And they can be a partner with this workforce that's already overworked and tired. You know, I got to hand it to the clinicians in the room because you're coming in there and making yourselves vulnerable. The hospital administrators, you're, you're putting yourself on the line. You know, that, that old saying that in a breakfast of bacon and eggs, you know, the chicken is involved and the pig is committed. You know, I'm involved. You guys are committed and you're exposing yourself. You're showing vulnerability because you want to help people. I mean, the tears I saw today, what I've seen where clinicians are the secondary victims of medical errors. And it's the system that's failing everybody. It's not the individual human making errors because I, for one, make multiple errors a day. And if I wasn't in a system that made sure those errors don't become problematic, and thank God I'm not in the business of patient care because I think I, I, I don't know <laughs> if the system sure would have failed me too and I would have been up here crying over what I've done. So patient engagement, family engagement is crucial. You know, Plato a long time ago uh, hypothesized the perfect way everything should be done. Of course, philosophers should rule the world and he said that. Uh, I kind of agree with him. But also he said the doctor should be the person that gets sick the most. All right? Because they understand the problem. And Dr. White, which by the way, I can't believe you don't have a pediatric otoscope at home. Um, Dr. White's son was right. He did have ear infection. <laughs> so it, it's important we get the families and patients involved and they are part of the solution. And by not interrupting them, by listening to them, even if they're taking a little too long, we can help fix the system. So I wanna thank you all for coming. I wanna thank you all for trying. Some good things are occurring. We need a lot more. But I also wanna just leave with where I started with. Please go back. Do whatever you can to at least save one life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.